Hello everybody. So in this video we'll talk a little bit about how devices in general determine location or cell phone devices determine location. Uh, and then in a, another video we'll kind of explore a little application that both gets uh, location permission and uh, pulls location data. So when we're talking about uh, determining location, figuring out the real-time location, sorry for the little mess up here. Uh, polling real-time location is the hallmark of mobile apps, right? It's used for all sorts of things from navigation to having fun and gathering pokeballs to safety and letting people know where you are. And that's one of the, the great things or the big differentiators between a smartphone that you can carry in your pocket and your typical laptop or desktop computer. It's just the ability to quickly and easily gather where in the world the device is. Okay? So, in Android, when we're talking about location, we are talking about floating point numbers that are the latitude and longitude coordinates of the, the device at the current time, right? So latitude, um, just like on your globe or your map, latitude goes from positive 90 at the North Pole to negative 90 at the South Pole, and longitude goes from negative 180 all, all the way to zero at the prime meridian and then up to positive 180. So these are the readings that you can get out of these things. Now whenever you ask Android to give you the location of the device, it gives you the latitude and the longitude in decimal uh, degrees. So 34 is the latitude. 0 0.225590 there is a fraction of a degree. and usually uh, it will also give you an accuracy reading. Okay, so you get the latitude, the longitude, and then an accuracy reading, which is usually reported in meters, and that's by default how Android does it. So when you're talking six decimal places here, you're talking down to within a meter or so. Um, so this is highly um, precise. Whether it's accurate or not is, is another matter. Um, and how accurate it is and how precise it is it's, uh, depends on, well, which technology was used for locating the device. And there's three options. Uh, one is the cell tower fix, the second is Wi-Fi positioning, and the third is GPS. And I just want to talk very briefly about how each of these things works. Right. So, first of all, the least accurate thing, the cellular tower fix. Um, Every phone knows which cell base station it is attached to, one of these ugly things that you see all over the planet. The phone knows where it's attached to. And then there are databases out there uh, up in the cloud that people provide as services that know where each cell tower is. And of course, the cell tower providers, you know, like at and and Sprint and Verizon, they know where their towers are. So, um, as your phone is traveling around, it's pinging off of these towers as the cellular signal or the Wi-Fi signal connects, the radio signal connects to each tower. Um, so, the accuracy though, so we know that the phone is attached to a cell tower, we know where in the world the cell tower is, but the range of the cell signal is quite large. You know, um, it can be one to two kilometers or further, so the accuracy here is quite poor. On the other hand, uh, this is basically information that you get for free. Okay, so, and if you've seen crime shows or uh, you listen to the serial podcast, when they're talking about pinging a tower and they know where the power tower is and then people, you know, driving along and figuring out where they were approximately, this is what they're talking about. Okay, so uh, the second option is through Wi-Fi positioning. And the way that Wi-Fi positioning works is that each wireless access point, right, and I got a picture of one, but you can't see it because my head's over top of it. There it is. Each wireless access point that you might see um, has a unique MAC address, media access control address. And Android is constantly scanning for nearby Wi-Fi, right? And so is so is uh, iOS, right? Oops, excuse me, right? And even when and this will maybe surprise you. Even when your Wi-Fi is turned off on your phone, you know, you, you click the little button up the top, turns it off, your Wi-Fi is still scanning, looking for these access points. And the reason is, it's trying to figure out where you are. Because there are databases out there um, 
of known coordinates of different MAC addresses. Okay, And so if you're attached to this guy and to this guy and to this guy and to this guy, it can measure the signal strength here, these decibel readings, and using tr what we call trilaterations, just a uh, algorithm, it can figure out, you know, if the signal strength is this, and you're talking to these guys, well, if you're talking to at least three of them, it, it can kind of approximate where you are. And it actually is pretty uh, accurate. It's accurate down to about 10 meters, 30 meters, which is good enough for a lot of applications, if you think about it. 10, 10 meters is 30 yards, more or less. Um, so, you know, it, that's pretty close. Uh, the interesting question is, well, where did this database of MAC addresses and coordinates come from? Well, it turns out Google got in a lot of trouble for this when they were driving their streetcars around making Google Maps, right, in the Google Street View. It turns out that in those Google streetcars, or Google Maps cars, there were Wi-Fi connectors that were just pinging all the Wi-Fi signals all around them. And as the car was driving along, it'd say, oh, I'm hitting, you know, edgy roam. Uh, with whatever MAC address, and they would say, oh, okay, I hit it, and they would record it, and they kind of got in some trouble for that. So anyway, there are these huge databases. Uh, the third, of course, is GPS, the Global Positioning System. Uh, you may not know this, but the GPS system that we all know and love is sponsored by the U.S. government. The Air Force runs it. There's 30-some satellites up there, and there's a special circuit inside your phone uh, usually this circuit is actually a part of the uh, cellular radio. Uh, they come in, in a little package. And the circuit is just sitting there constantly listening for uh, the signals from these GPS satellites to come down. And then the circuit has to hear from multiple satellites. It needs to hear from at least three, but it, most circuits can go up to, say, hearing from 12 satellites at once. And uh, again, it performs trilateration, a kind of algorithm to isolate all right, if based on the signal strength and the distance, um, figure out exactly precisely where you are. And GPS can be really precise. Um, consumer GPS, like the kind you would find in a smartphone, is usually accurate to around three meters, and that's good, right? You know, three meters about nine, ten feet. Um, Professional GPS, commercial GPS for uh, surveying, and then military GPS, they can be precise down to the centimeter. Or some downside to GPS is that it is power hungry. So if you're only getting GPS signal uh, positioning, that circuitry takes some juice to run. And so you'll drain your battery pretty quickly if the only thing you're getting your location from is GPS and you're constantly polling for that information. Okay. Um, just the, some quick charts that show you the accuracy of, of the main methods there. Um, as you can see, the GPS in general is way more accurate. Most of its readings are down below 20 meters. This is a little experiment I wrote, I did in my uh, former life. Um, Wi-Fi is a little more consistent, but it never drops below 20 meters in terms of accuracy. So, uh, all right, so now you're writing an app and you want to ask the phone, hey, give me your location. Where am I right now? Android provides this thing called the Location Manager, which is an API, which can help access, provide an interface over these underlying technologies of Wi-Fi positioning, GPS positioning, and cell tower positioning. Um, asking for a location is typically, we call it polling for a location. But using the Location Manager, the Location Manager is not smart. It just tries and gets the data. Um, it can be tricky to use, uh, and figuring out a polling strategy is tough. How often do you need to update it? How accurate do you need to be? What are you going to do if airplane is mode is on? What are you going to do if the user location services are turned off? How do I not drain the person's battery? What if the person doesn't didn't give me access to their location? They didn't grant permission. It's actually quite challenging. It gets pretty sophisticated pretty quickly. And that's not even worrying about the algorithms, which you don't have to worry about for figuring out where you are. That's just like the life cycle of asking for a location. Um, suppose Here's just an example of how complex it can be, right? So this is an example chain of events for polling for a location one time. Like, I just want to know where I am right now, right? So the application starts. It's listening for GPS and network updates. 
network being the cell tower. Um, and, oh, it has an old network position, or it has an old position from the network. Uh, okay, great. Uh, I don't actually have to ask for it. It's already there. It's cached. But, um, okay, so I'll use that. But we know that the network location, the cell location, is inaccurate. So that's not great. Oh, there's also a cached GPS location, but it's too old. It's out of date. So we're going to get rid of it. We get a new cell ID fix is received. Okay, so we got a new network location. Still not great, ah, but now Wi-Fi has come online. Maybe I've come into range of some wireless access points. So now I can get my Wi-Fi location. Uh, but then we turn out that uh, that Wi-Fi base location, the signal strength wasn't good, so we have to get rid of it. You know, you shouldn't trust it. Oh, and finally the GPS comes online. We get three satellite signals. It's going to give us our current best location, right? So, uh, all right, I've got my best location now. Uh, so I can stop listening, and let's just give that best estimate of the location to the user. Right? This is just an example of how complicated it is to ask for one uh, position, things you have to worry about. So rather than you, the developer, working about it, Google has provided uh, some APIs to us. One is the Fused Location Provider and Google Play Services. So rather than developing your own strategy for dealing with all these possible things that can go wrong, things that you need to worry about when pulling the location, you can use an API from Google. Um, it's still a little tricky uh, because you have to handle all the exceptional conditions. You have to react to the exceptional conditions. Like if you go out of cell phone range, you can display that and you will get a reaction to it. You have to decide how to handle it. But nonetheless, it does kind of simplify the whole process. You just have to react to the process, but you don't have to think about all the things that could go wrong. You just kind of tell Google, here's what I want to do. I want to get updates every 60 seconds, and they need to be at least this accurate. And it'll kind of provide those things to you. All right, so um, this is an overview of some of these technologies for location services. Next video, we'll go into just a quick demonstration project, kind of shows you how some of this stuff works. Until then.